Hey, welcome back to 40 Days of Holiness. I'm Daryl Stetler. Grab your workbook. If you don't have one, you can go to 40daysofholiness.com and buy yours and get it, download it, print it out. I'd encourage you to do it, okay? Here's today's theme for day three. Sin separates us from holiness. All right, so if holiness is not a static quality, but a dynamic flowing equality, uh, quality, what do we have? Why do we have a problem? Well, if God is the source of all holiness and His holiness flows down, His holiness is communicated to us and flows down to me, what is it that breaks that circuit, right? If What is it that breaks that connection between us and God so that the connection doesn't flow anymore? Well, the answer is found in a classic passage on the holiness of God, Isaiah 6. In Isaiah 6, God sees the Lord in the brilliant beauty and overwhelmingness of His holiness. So let's read, okay? Isaiah 6, 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. And above him were the seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two feet and two wings they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. So at the sound of their voices, verse 4, The doorposts and the thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried. I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. And my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. What Isaiah felt in that moment was the fact that he wasn't like what he saw. He realized that what was separating him from God wasn't his ethnicity or his background or his lack of knowledge. It was his own heart, exemplified in this passage by his mouth. It was not just his heart, it was sin. You see, Isaiah had been speaking in chapters 1 through 5, and he'd been saying, woe to this one or woe to that nation, woe to this wicked people. But when he gets in the presence of God, he calls out, woe to me. There's an old story of a young child who was riding with his father through the country in the summer. And as they were driving along, he saw sheep out in the field and he said, Oh, Dad, look at how white those sheep are in that green grass. A few months later, they drove the same road after a blanket of white snow had fallen. And he said, Oh, Dad, look at those dirty sheep against that white snow. Now, you know, the sheep hadn't changed, right? The only thing that had changed is what he compared them to. And Isaiah is having a moment like this. He hadn't changed, but he was now see him seeing himself not in the light of wicked people around him, but in the light of holiness of God. And he felt the separation, the distance, the overwhelming reality. He was unworthy. Now, it's important to remember here that the reason for this is not that God's holiness is a negative, not that it's bad, it's that it's so good, so beautiful, so desirable that nothing else can compare to it. As if you were a starving man at a feast, locked behind a gate, reaching through and unable to get that which is most desirable to you. So the second element of holiness is this. Holiness requires ongoing moral excellence in heart and action. Sin separates us from God. Sin is what breaks the connection. And it's not just sin in action, it's sin in being. Let's look at specifically what Isaiah says. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken from the tongs from tongs on the altar. And with it, he touched my mouth and said, see, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin is atoned for. What does it take to be connected to be used by God in a covenant relationship of the, uh, with a God of overwhelming holiness? Removal of sin. It requires moral excellence of heart and action. My favorite comic strip is Bill, uh, Calvin, Calvin and Hobbes, drawn by Bill Watterson. And I remember one of the comic strips, Calvin was talking with Hobbes about Santa and what Santa was expecting of him as he waited for Christmas. And Calvin says, do I just have to act good or do I actually have to be good in my heart and soul? And Hobbes rolls his eyes and responds, in your case, I guess Santa will just have to take what he can get. (laughs) Santa might, but God does not. 
It isn't just actions of sin that hinders the holiness connection. It's the state of sin, the essence of sin, the being of it. Note that Isaiah didn't just say, I have said unclean things, but he said, I have unclean lips. Uncleanness of action comes from uncleanness of being. And Jesus picks up on this idea in the New Testament and says, out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. In other words, sin in the being comes out in the actions. So to be rightly connected to God isn't just a matter of do right, it's be right. Not just do right things, but be holy. So what God calls you to isn't just do better, but be holy. Not just actions that are a little bit better, but a state of being that is pure and holy and undefiled in his eyes. How deep can that really go, though? Like, how serious are we talking about? Well, that's what we're going to be speaking about for the next, the rest of this 40 days, all right? So we're only two days in. Don't, uh, j- just grab hold. Don't, don't skip over the part with the workbook, okay? Uh, don't, don't skip over it. It's important that you allow the Holy Spirit to soak down into your mind and your mindset and allow Him to work on you as you meditate on the things of God in His holiness, all right? So get a hold of the workbook, spend time with that, spend time asking God to help you to live and be, not just act, but be holy. I'll see you back here tomorrow.